Okay, this is, um, today is February 16th, 2022, and my name is Sandra Lafke Carlson, and I'm here in the Tualatin Heritage Center uh, with Ross Baker from the Tualatin Historical Society, and uh, with Kay Gooding, Kay Nelson Gooding, uh, who's been a member of the community for many years, and she's going to um, tell us some of her stories about her life in Tualatin. And uh, thank you so much, Kay. Thank you. Uh, so um, let's start from the beginning, and where, where were you born? Where did you grow up? I was born in St. Joe, Missouri. Grew up there. Though I spent the summers on the Lake of the Ozarks with my grandparents. I loved it there. So you, you probably did some water sports there? Oh, yes. <laughs> the tale goes that I was thrown in the river by my brother, who was 13 years, years old, and I heard the light when I was about a year and a half old, and I've been swimming ever since. <laughs> And they have pictures of me on a surfboard at two and a half or three and a half. We can't read the numbers and see which one it is. If it's two and a half or three, um, riding on it that young. Really? Oh. And uh, so that's so you grew up there in, in the summer. Spring? I spent the summers with my grandparents. Okay. Who lived there? Okay. They were one of the original people that built, and they started their home in 38 when the lake was officially filled at 39, 1939. Oh. 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 And, uh, and what, who else was in your family? So you had a brother. Yes, I had a brother who was 13 years older than I am, and my parents, my dad was a hog salesman um, for Swift and Henry in St. Joe. My brother eventually went to work for him also after World War II. And so did you, you went to high school there as well? Yes, I did. And, and then what happened after high school? I went to the University of Kansas. Uh, well, I went to Stevens for a year. And then I went to the University of Kansas and got my degrees from there. Oh, what, what did you study? Uh, elementary ed was my bachelor's and special ed was my uh, master's. I taught emotionally disturbed boys. Oh my gosh, that sounds like a challenge. It was. Uh, <laughs> and you taught there? Yes. In Missouri. I taught at the University of Kansas Med School for um, two years because it was 11 months out of the year and first grade for two years. And then when I moved out here, um, the first school district that they put me in was uh, the juvenile detention center. And I was only there a few months and then I switched to Edgefield Lodge, which was a residential school for emotionally disturbed children. That's, is that the Edgefield? Yes, yeah, it's right next door. Okay. <laughs> Same property, but next door. Okay. <laughs> and so was it? a job that brought you to Oregon? You know, my first husband was a doctor, and we came out to do his internship in his residency at Good Sam. And he, he was in Nelson? So you know. He was Collins. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, and I know, did you have a family? Did you have your daughters? With yes, you? I did. Um, my first husband and I were divorced, and I married Norm Nelson, and we had two girls, Kristen and Amy. And that's where the story begins with Tualatin. So they grew up in Tualatin? Yes, they did. Both went to Tiger High School. And, and where did you live in Tualatin when they were growing up? <clears throat> We lived on Killarney, in Killarney Lane. We were the last house at the end of the dead end street. And that was the, um, the O'Callaghan's yes. kind of developed that neighborhood, right. didn't they? Yes. 
and we were right at the top of the hill and we were the last house that was built um, on Killarney. And I remember you told me a, a, there's a story about that and we won't name names, <laughs> but it's kind of an interesting story. What effect did it? Um, I'm guessing you're referring to the street going through. Um, when there was a builder that wanted to put Killarney through to connect to the other Killarney on the other side out of Indian Woods, um, they had to cut two of the biggest trees in Tualatin out of my yard. And because it was in the road alignment, if they didn't put the road around. So everyone on the street was very much opposed to this going through. So they got the engineers and all of these people to come and make presentations to the city council. And the city council had already made up their minds. And it was very obvious they weren't even looking at the material or anything that was presented to them. And so it, was, it made the Oregonian. And it, was in lots of papers. Okay. But the worst part was I probably had, some, I had a lot of owls in those trees. And oh. I think we didn't use the owls as our reasoning for them not to cut the trees down. <laughs> <laughs> they were maybe, were they, they probably weren't the spotted owls. Yes, we think that they probably were because after really? that we never had them again. Oh. They were huge trees. I mean, my dad had measured around them. Well, Amy was two, so that would have been in the 70s. And they were 14 feet around, no, I'm sorry, 14 yards around then. And his height, and he was six foot tall. Because he went home, he had took, he had my mother take pictures of, because he hadn't seen trees that big before. He not been to see the sequoia, so he didn't realize that there were trees a lot bigger than those, but it took one truck to carry each one of those trees out. They were so big, they couldn't put two of them on one truck. Uh, they were big, yeah, they were big trees. Old growth. Yeah. So that, that changed. That yes. changed your neighborhood. And now that, you know, that's, that was the key to getting the tree uh, proposal in Tualatin, so people couldn't cut the trees anymore. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Huh. Um. So, and it's a tree city. I, I noticed the sign as I was driving yeah. Oh, yeah. this way. <laughs> 37 years of <laughs> tree yeah. city, so. Yeah. So it's good. But, uh, so, um, so as your, your daughters were growing up and going to school, um, you became very involved in the community in a lot of ways, didn't you? Amy, my youngest, was the first class in Byron when they built it. And so they, um, I was on the local school committee uh, because of that, I mean, her because of her class being the first. And, and then I was on the budget committee for uh, the school district. And uh, and you and you belonged to other organizations. You you joined the church, yes, the Methodist church. I joined the church when uh, Kristen was born, my oldest, uh -huh. and we still lived on Garnet Road then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've been there a long time in this building, <laughs> this wonderful old building. That's right. So when you started, when you yes. became a member, it was in this building. Yes. And both girls were baptized in this building. Oh. So. And you belong to um, the Elks. Yes, I'm an Elks member. 28 years. Can't believe it. Do you dance? Uh, still, you dance? yes. You? Yes. When I can, uh -huh. and I'm 60 year PEO member, also. BP. That's PEO. What is the PEO? It's a philanthropic educational organization, and we do scholarships and loans for women. Oh. We're over 150 years old. Oh my gosh! Oh. And there's a Tualatin. Is there a Tualatin group? Not really. I, my group is in Lake Oswego, um, but we're all over 
Portland and okay. actually in three other states we have members right now too. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a big organization. We had over $650,000 of scholarships just in Oregon this year that we really? gave out. So, wow. yeah. Um, and you've also been, a, I think, a longtime member of the Grange, the Winona Grange here in Tallinn. Not too many years, but yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is the Grange doing these days? Oh, Let's we see. are, even with COVID, I'm amazed at how many things we have going. We have a lot of new things going right now. We have a puzzle group that meets over there. And people come from all over, as far away as Eugene to it, and Vancouver. And it's just a puzzle exchange. They meet and, and freely exchange puzzles quarterly. <laughs> and we have a writing group that's in now. We've always had the ukulele people for a number of years. And of course, the dances and the Scottish things. But we have a cultist group now that meets regularly downstairs. And we're just picking up a lot of new and interesting groups that are using the Grange and liking to have it available to them. Oh, that, that's great because, I, I mean, it started out as a kind of a, was it a support group for right. the farmers. Right. And, um, and of course there aren't many family farms left. Not around that's here. changed. No. So, but it's still, the Grange is still strong. Still. Yes, I would say very strong. Oh. Oh. Um, and do, uh, do, you, do you hold an office in the... Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm chaplain this year. Okay. Um, and well, um, at some point you, um, you had a career um, outside of the home. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you talk about that? Sure. Um, of course, I taught for several years. And when I was raising the girls, and I uh, kind of retired from that. And then um, I was in the insurance business for a number of years and worked for um, a couple of different companies, actually. I started out with Mutual of Omaha, and the Fun part of that was that I got to uh, do Medicare, which was fairly new, but not really new. But I was the first one in Oregon to that they had had asked if I would do the long-term care. So that was quite a learning experience, and I really enjoyed that too. I, I enjoyed meeting the people and talking to them. And then I went to the New England and um, worked for them for several years also. And I managed uh, 4,000, what they call orphan accounts. Those that don't have a, a current agent, you know, they passed away or just dropped out of the business. And I managed those and then I was assisted the uh, brokerage manager who was also from Missouri. And, um, that allowed me to do a little traveling with him as we talked, went out and talked to the, like the Edward Jones people and the people we were brokers for. So I did that. And then I kept my finger in it for a number of years, uh, working with an independent agent and helping him with his uh, dental coverage and some things that he had. And then you had your, um you had a business in Portland. Yes, I did. Your, your florist <laughs> shop. I had a flower shop in Portland. I had a wonderful partner. She was the florist. Mm -hmm. I was just the front lady. I worked the counter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had that for several years also. And where was that? Oh, it was right across the street from the, the timbers. Home. <laughs> oh, the, I think it's the PG West Burn side. 20, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Twentieth or twenty second. Twentieth. Twentieth. Right there, on Fred Myers across the, was is across the street. Always has been across the street from. Mm -hmm. There'd been a flower shop there for hundreds, not hundreds, close to it. Really. Yeah. 
and uh, when we bought it and after we closed it was vacant for a while and then another flower shop went in. I don't know what's in there anymore. I think there, somebody said there's still one there, but I don't know that. <laughs> and and you um, you got some of the flowers that you sold to the shop you got from Twalton. I did. Right? We bought flowers from all around, but Twalton was one of the places that my business partner really liked to get flowers from. Really? Why yeah. is that? Uh, number one, they were fresh. And number two, I could pick them up and bring them. <laughs> but we just like working with the, the florists or the growers here. Mm -hmm. um, and what were the names? Do you remember the names of some of the growers? That you... I don't. Um, <laughs> well, how about Jane Brown? Did you oh, get well, I personally got my garlic and stuff from her. <laughs> <laughs> Too, yeah, didn't she, she did. She did. Um, but we did. We were known for the big Ecuadorian roses, the, the huge heads, and of course those were all imported. But that's mm -hmm. what we became known for in the city. Mm -hmm. But um, we did all kinds of flowers. Oh. Did you ever get flowers from my grandparents' farm? The <laughs> I wonder the iris or the I wondered or, about that if and Kaylin is gone now, so I couldn't ask her if that happened to be one of them that she got in front. I would just she just say go pick up it so and so. Okay, I could do that on my way in. You know. So, yeah. Yeah. That was one of my business partner's favorite flowers, so <laughs> <laughs> it was very possible. Um and, uh, and and you're married now to um, Mr. Like Gooding, mm -hmm. and uh, and you live in King City. Correct. Um, but you're still very involved in Tualatin. I still feel like Tualatin's home. Yeah. You've seen a lot of changes, haven't you? Oh, heavens, yes. When I moved here, um, I was pregnant with Amy my second daughter, and um, the joke in town was that they were going to have to change the population signs because mm -hmm. I had one and one on the way, and that was mm -hmm. Yvonne's husband used to say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, there's been a lot of changes, and I wonder if oh. you... Um, how, how would you compare Tualatin now to when you were living here and raising your daughters? Um, oh, the growth is the biggest thing. I mean, we have a hospital now and Kaiser and all of these things that were here when I originally lived here. I mean, all of this property down here was all wetlands and where the shopping center is now, Hayden's was. And the growth just always astonishes me because I hear it was street and I go, oh, I didn't even know that was in Tualatin. <laughs> and we would walk um, every day and we were off of Killarney. I mean, it was woods, it was farmlands that we walked through and all of that now is housing developments. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it was astonished at how it's grown. Mm -hmm. What would you say, other than feeling like this is home, uh, because you're still connected through the church and the Grange, um, and what would you say is one of the best things about Tualatin? Oh, some of the restaurants. <laughs> it's got some great restaurants. What's your favorite? Mm, I've got several. Um, Uh-oh, I'm going to be in trouble here. <laughs> uh, I love the little Mexican restaurant that's across the freeway. Um, Rosie's? No. No, it's on. It's been there forever. It looks over Niagara Creek. Um, I just did blank. It's called Old Age, um, and I, I we like Panera's real well. And mm -hmm. there's just a, it's a lot of small restaurants that have really good food. Of course, Lee's Kitchen's been there forever, and that's always been my favorite. The girls still ask about it every once in a while. Oh. 
kindness, please. <laughs> where, where are your daughters now? Uh, the oldest one, Kristen, is in Petaluma, California, and Amy's in Snohomish, Washington. Oh. That's how I got the title of the I-5 mom. I was always going back and forth. <laughs> and you have grandchildren. Yes. And Papiana is Kristen's daughter, and she is 12 and a half. She reminded me the other day. And Kristen, I mean, Amy has um, two boys, Eli and Gabriel. And Eli is at the University of no, Montana State, I think, is, and Gabriel is a junior in high school this year. So. And she has acreage. <laughs> oh. Yeah, she's got seven acres up there, and she's got a garden that rivals her mom's, I'll tell you. Oh. And she, okay, and she puts up, she cans. Oh, and yes. She's a great little cook. Both of the girls are great cooks out uh, there. Oh. Homegrown cooking and homegrown stuff. Well, both, even Kristen has a garden in, in um, Petaluma. Kristen has chickens, too. Well, they, both the girls have had chickens, but. Did you teach them that? I mean, did you have chickens in a garden when you were growing? No, but we had a big garden. Oh, you did? Yeah, both it. When we were in Garden Acres Road, we had about a half an acre there. Then I had one in Tualatin. I had a half an acre of land, because it was the last house on Killarney. Uh -huh. So we had a, a big garden there also. Yeah. So nowadays, you, um, you're you still busy. <laughs> and you you do um, water aerobics? Oh, yes, three days a week. Three mornings a week. That's amazing. And uh, and what else? What, what else? So, uh, what are your other hobbies or interests? Well, I knit, make scarves for the homeless school in Portland, and I do have raised beds in my little dinky yard. And I raised tomatillas for the food bank. And last year I had a lot of squash, not many tomatillas, but we had a lot of squash last year that we took over. I have some other things, but mostly herbs is the rest of the thing I take over there. So. And you recently donated something to the Historical Society, or a couple of things. <laughs> and um, could you talk about that? Because uh, okay. those are interesting. Um, when I was young, I had a collection of what was called storybook dolls. And um, they were things like the days of the weeks or the months of the year or seasons of the year. Um, they had all kinds of themes. And I had those, I collected those. And then I think one of the other things, did I give you the Sparkle Plenty doll? I don't think so. Oh, well I had a Sparkle Plenty doll too. And I'm not sure what's happened to it, but it would, would be very old by now. I mean, it was from the Sparkle Plenty, of course, was from Dick Tracy's um, oh. comic strip. Uh -huh. But I had met the real Sparkle Plenty, and I used to play with her at the Ozarks. But according to my grandparents, I don't, I remember her mother, but I didn't remember the little girl very much. But um, they came to Grab Voice Mills on Saturday when my grandparents were at Grab Voice Mills, and, and we were in the same place. And my mother, Actually, was the one that told me I played with her a couple of times, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I never put it together the the doll and the little girl for a long time. Mm -hmm. and then somebody said, "Oh, there's that's the same person that." I said, "Well, she doesn't look quite like her, but she had really long hair like she." Had. <laughs> and, and Dick Tracy was the cartoon. Yes. Strip and Sparkle Plenty was like a character. In yes, Gravel Gertie's daughter. Oh. And Gravel Gertie was from Gravois Mills, Missouri. Oh. And was a real person. So you you played with those dolls and you um and so those are the dolls that you you donated along yes. with some doll clothes. Oh, and those doll clothes my grandmother made for me. Oh okay. And they were 
I had baby doll also, which I guess most of those doll clothes were from. But some of those clothes were made out of feed sacks, which my grandparents would buy their things with, and it would come in those feed sacks, and then my grandmother would wash and save all that fabric and make doll clothes and clothes that I had. I had some pinafores and things that I remember that she made, and I loved them all. And the feed sacks were, I mean, the times were harder then, and fabric was probably expensive, and the feed Hard sacks. To come by. And so the feed sacks yeah. made another use out of them. Sure. Um, she made tea towels and all kinds of things out of them. Um, and then you also donated recently a, um, I think it's called a, a spool box, um, or a sewing box. I'm not sure what you Oh, mean. yes. Um, I should have brought that, those down. But, um, but it's um, a spool. It, some people, I talked to an antique dealer about it, and she said that it's, they sometimes call them spool boxes. But she said sewing box is a term that if you look them up on the internet or something, you see most often. And um, she had guessed that that one was 75 to 100 years old. Really? And it was given to me. Okay, so when you were a child, or the last few years? Last few years, okay. yeah. And yeah, it's really nice. It's about the size of maybe a big picnic basket yes. with a handle, and then it and opens. It, it opens out. Yes, and it folds out, so it's it looks very contained. But when you fold it out, all these pieces come out, and it's where you can put all kinds of needles or spools of thread in it or whatever. And did you, have you been a sewer, a seamstress? Did oh, you yes. Oh. I used to make the girls clothes when they were little, and oh. I used to let them sew. Oh. Oh. I used to let my clothes, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you've done a lot of different things yeah. in your life. A lot of different interests and skills. Yeah. Um, the one thing I've done probably all of my life is I love to read. Uh -huh. So that's the thing that's carried through from childhood all the way through. I'm still a real avid reader. And what kind of reading? What kind of books? Or is it articles or oh, no, mysteries? Like, uh, mysteries and novels and yeah. Right now I'm stuck in a pattern. In a pattern of books, mm -hmm. which ones? Uh, Alex Cross Mysteries and Patterson's books. <laughs> Rochelle and I are now trading all of these back and forth. Oh, you are. We both have so many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you would like to tell about? Your life, or your family, or your interests. I've just always loved to walk and it's just always has felt like home since I first came here, and it's just been a super place. And you're yeah. you're still a member of the Tualatin Historical Society too. Yes. Yeah. It just seems natural. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well. Um, we really appreciate you coming by and telling us your story and your um, and your connection with Tualatin. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank you very much. We're we're going to it's going to be recorded and will be it'll be on our available through the website. Um, we're at we're collecting quite a few. Uh, recorded the stories. I gosh, I don't know. I think we might be up to seventy or more. Cool. Yeah. You got Lois and Rochelle's and um, I think we have Rochelle's. I need to check about that. Yeah. Because she has lived here all her life, I think. Oh yeah, she has. So um, she's still on the Century Farm. So yes. 
to own their family's farm, so. Do it for May. Okay. Because we'll be going there. For May. Okay, where are you going? Paris. <gasps> Paris, oh my goodness. You and If they Paul. let us in. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bill Shell's going to be my roommate. Oh, oh. Is this a uh, Rhodes Scholar or? Um, no, we're going as retired teachers. <laughs> oh. Because my neighbor uh, is one, and she does all these trips. Saying, uh, she's talk, trying to talk us into going to Japan now. And I can't do my ass. But, uh, well, Paris. Uh, yeah, but Paris. In the spring. That'll be nice. Well, have we're a wonderful trip. Thank you. We're probably going to do, well, I mean, I virtually, it's off, I hope. We have a, a I have six days in Nice, and they wanted, wasn't my idea, but they went right along with it. What we're thinking about doing, except we don't know how much we can do, because the cans is there, and so is the road race at the same time. We want to oh. go to Monte Carlo, and um, then, you know, if you're there, you might as well drive to Italy. It's so <laughs> close, you know, and, you know, I went years, this was a long time ago, but I was in Nice and went to Mon the casino at Monte Carlo, and it was the most boring <laughs> casino I've ever been in. <laughs> it was maybe, it was winter, maybe oh. that was the reason. It's probably, yeah. Not well, I couldn't believe how hard it was. We got the last room at the hotel, and um, everybody said, oh, you've got to get this, you've got to get this. But the, as soon as we realized that cancer was going on, at the same time, so there's all these people. That's the film festival. Yes. Yeah. And then as soon as I, and then I told my son-in-law when we were going to be gone, he said, oh, that's the race. You're going to be there for the race. And he got all excited. And I thought, what? And then I realized what he was talking about. And I said, oh, yeah, you want to go with us? <laughs> See, he and Kristen both raised cars. Oh, man, I thought that I said girls couldn't get that bug. So Amy drives a sports car, and she is Kristen. Kristen Ashley's pretty good, but she's she stopped. She's not racing. Okay. You know, once a month, like she was, and stuff. It's too hard to put a hobby for him to do it. Uh -huh. yeah. So. Well, you have a wonderful time in Paris. Thank you. I am doing the Yeah, I'll have to um, check with <clears throat> Rochelle yeah, to make sure that, yeah, and interview her if we don't have her story before May. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bug her. Yes. Do I that. won't see.